In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to create point to multipoint coverage maps in Aviad Design. So let's get started. First I'm going to go to Google Earth and copy a site and then return to Aviad Design and add this site to the project using the KLM base file feature. This is just one of the methods that are available to import sites. Once the site is in place, we can use the crosshair button to zoom into the project. Now click on the map terrain feature to make it visible, and now we can see clearly the site's location. Next, we can add a point to multipoint transmitter to this site. You can also add the transmitters to multiple sites. Just check the box for the site where you want to add the transmitter. Once selected, the point to multipoint transmitter button becomes available. To open the configurator, click on this button. Once clicked, the point to multipoint transmitter configurator becomes visible. The configurator allows the selection of equipment for the transmitter and receiver sides. Let's start by setting the number of sectors in the azimuth field. Multiple sectors can be set by typing the directions separated by commas. Next we select the frequency band that we're going to use. Frequency band options will reflect what's available in the Aviat Design point to multipoint equipment database. These other fields can be used to select the antenna heights of both the transmitter and the receiver sites. In this case, I'm going to leave them as default. In the next field, you can select the diffraction method that is used, which in this case is the Burlington ITU PR526. And next, you can enter the coverage distance. The distance will be used to draw a circle around the selected base station. This will define the calculation area. In this example, we will set this distance for 4 miles or 6.5 kilometers. You can also set the calculation resolution. This defines the sample distance of the path profiles that are calculated from the center point out to the edge of the circle. In this case, we will take the elevation samples every 160 feet or 50 meters so that the diffraction loss is calculated at each one of these points. You can also choose whether to use clutter or not. If clutter is used, trees and building layers are used in the calculation. Sigma is the additional terrain loss that can be added for different types of terrains. Now that we have set the basic settings, we can pick the transmitter. The radio transmitter is filtered by the selected frequency band. In this example, the frequency is 2.5 GHz, which means that only RDL 3000 can be selected. We can also select the channel size. Once the radio has been loaded, the radio specs are all available. Now the transmitter power can be manually set. The RDL 3000 radio has two MIMO options, so you can choose which coverage you, that you want to view. And the same is true for polarization. Multiple antenna types are available. These include an integrated panel, a parabolic sector, and others. Let's select a 60 degree sector antenna. Now you can edit the antenna gain on both sides. Additional losses can be added if you're using a protection configuration. Next, select your cable and your an antenna cable lengths. You can also check the antenna patterns. This will display the azimuth and elevation pattern for the antenna that you selected. So now the transmitter settings are completed, the same thing can be done on the receiver or subscriber side, but we're going to select a different antenna. 
this antenna will have different antenna pattern than the one we just selected for the base station. And now again, you have to select your cable and your cable length. So at this point, we're ready to add the pointer multipoint transmitter to the project. Once added, the transmitter will be visible in the pointer multipoint transmitter tab. There are several more options available here to choose from. You can locate, locate the site, and if there are multiple sites on a large network, this can help you more easily locate the site. The modify option allows you to go back and edit the transmitter parameters. For example, you can edit the transmitter name, the antenna elevations, change the equipment selections, or you can change the display colors. It's also possible to change the coverage map display type. You can select to view the coverage map by modulations, capacities, or thresholds. It's also possible to create a copy of the site transmitter. This will save all existing parameters for that site. Now we can see the downlink and the uplink coverage map. Once completed, the coverage maps can be displayed. And the last step is that you can import the results back into Google Earth, so now you can see, conveniently, the coverage. And that completes our Aviat Design Point to Multipoint demonstration. Thank you for your attention, and stay tuned for more new design features that we'll be adding in the future.